All right, good morning. It is Wednesday, the 28th of September. And of course, the class is AWD 1100 C sharp programming. Today we'll be taking the hands on test number four or hot four, which is on chapter eight. The test was emailed to you this morning. The test is due in your GitHub repository by 11.59.59 p.m. tonight, Wednesday, the 28th of September. So there are two problems on the test. If you have taken the time to go through the problems that I did in class, you should have no problem, especially with the first one. Now notice what it says here. Write GUI application hot for GUI that looks up contact information by either first name or last name. It says here program must store this table in three parallel arrays or lists and use an appropriate loop. So what they're saying here is if you look at what is right here, you will have three different arrays, one that will, rep will represent first names, one that will represent last names, one that will represent phone numbers. From there, all right, it's a lookup program. So when you look at your, when you look here at the interface, make sure to change the text that's up here. Make sure to rename your form. Make sure to set, you know, an accept button, cancel button, etc. And you might say, well, there is none on there. Then add a, add a clear button, add an exit button. It's not going to take much time. You've got the code to do it already. All right, and what do you have to do if you add an X, uh, a clear button here? You've got to clear this, which will be some kind of a label, clear this, which will be a text box, and set your focus. That's all you've got to do. And for the, if you add an exit button, I've already given you the code for that. You've used it in virtually every program. So, you should be able to come in here and you'll notice here's a couple of examples. So they put Bryony and they searched and it came up with the first name, with the last name and with the phone number. They did it on the last name with Hester. All right, and again, it came up with the same information. They did it again with Sam and there is no Sam in here. There is no Sam in there, so it just comes up and it says error. So if we look closely at the grades, all right, this first quest, this first problem is worth 60 points. Number one, controls are laid out as expected. All right, again, I would like you to take the time and I wish I would have put it on here and I didn't. I, this is, test was not written by me. But I'd like you to please try to add a clear button and an exit button. OK, all right, so that's two points. Next, the form is renamed. Well, to what? How about FRM hot for GUI would be just fine. The form text is set to what? Address book. If you want to put address book slash your name, that's fine. The accept button is set. If you added the clear and the exit buttons, the cancel button will be set. Your start position is set. Your tab order is set. All right, now you could argue with me here and say, well, even if I don't set the tab order at all, it's set. Well, it should be set in a natural type of order. All right, that's six points. Controls and variable names follow. You know, basically you name them, you give them good names, names that make sense. And what we should have said on here too is try to modularize. This should go without saying no. So try to modularize with each one of these examples. Don't put everything inside of a buttons. Uh, of, don't put all your code to do this inside of that search button. It's just not a good way to code. All right, program must use arrays or lists. Program must use a single loop. I showed you a for loop. We've done this on several programs, so there really shouldn't be any kind of problem. Failed searches display all expected error messages. Error, error, error like this. 
user can search. You can search for somebody by first name, five points if that works, by last name, five points if that works. All right. The search should be case insensitive. All right. So again, we talked about using the two upper on both those. I've shown you examples on how to do all of this, not virtually all of this, all of this. All right, let's see here. You should be able to do partial searches. So for instance, if you look at the example that's in there, if I put in Hess right here instead of Hester, it should still come back with this. If I put down Oni, O-N-Y in there, it should still come back with this. That's using that contains that we talked about in class. That's five points. Program displays the first name of the found user, the last name of the found user, and the phone number of the found user. Each of those are worth five points, so if you add them, two plus six is eight, two is 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. So that is the 60 points. That is the 60 points for the first question. Then question number two, write a console program call it hot for a console that allows the user to enter the price of all items in their shopping cart. Now I added the use array part because otherwise there was no array in here and then computes the total cost of those items. So when you look at this, all right, you're prompting there. You're literally prompting. I don't care if you say 0102 or if you say item one, item two, whatever. But as it says, if you enter in a price that's greater than zero, the price is accepted. So there's no upper bound on here. You can put basically anything you want in there. All right. You add the item then to an array, an array of what? Decimal or double. Then you prompt the user for another item. If the price that you enter is less than zero, that's a bad price. So you ignore it. In other words, skip it. All right. Notice how they said it here invalid price. So do something like that. Don't add it to the array. Display an error message, something like invalid price, and then prompt the user to enter the item again. So notice when you put 0, 02 here, or like I said, if you want item 2, once you put negative 1 in there and it says invalid price, it still says 0, 02 there. Finally, if the user enters a price of zero, don't add it to the array, but that's your program endpoint. So once you put in a zero, you have to keep track of how many valid items were purchased. In the example here, there's two, all right? Then you have to add them together and add by the number of items you purchased. So in this case, it is what? 100 plus 200 divided by two, which gives you 150. Then you have to add the totals as well, which gives you the 300. Display the total tax, which is 8%. So 300 tax percent, 300 times 0 0.08 is 24. Then when you add the two together, you get 324. Try to make your interface at least respectable looking. All right, I'm going to be online not on Teams, of course, but I'm going to be online until 11.55 this morning. In addition, my class this afternoon, I'm going to probably lecture for only about, it's going to be between a half an hour and an hour. We're just wrapping up what we're working on. All right, so I would say by one o'clock, I'll be available again to answer questions you want to email me JP Scott at edu. All right. Okay. Um, I will be gone 
between 4.30 and about 6.15 tonight. But after that, I will be home. I didn't say around 6.15 to 6.30, I will be home. I will have the computer in my kitchen and I will check it every 15 to 30 minutes. If again, you have questions, feel free to ask. All right, I, what I don't want is I don't want somebody to turn in something blank and say, well, I just didn't get this. I'll try to help you as much as I can. All right, so again, here, here is your rubric, the controls and variable names follow accepted or conventions, what we've done in class. Two points, you use an array for just the valid prices, three points. You accept valid prices and you reject invalid prices, five points. Program stops when you enter a zero, five points. Program correctly displays the number of items, or it says accurately here, five points. Displays the average price, and the average price really should be to within two decimal places. If you format your average, your subtotal, your tax, and your total to currency, which again is two string, and then inside of the parens, it's a C, upper or lower case, you should be fine. So the average price is done correctly, five points. The subtotal is done correctly, five points. The tax total is done correctly, five points. And the grand total is done correctly, five points. All right. Again, I want you to modularize in this program. OK, and I wish I had looked at done a better job of looking at these instructions ahead of time because I would have made that worth some of the points. All right. In fact, I'm going to do this. All right. If you do modularize. I'm going to give you an extra five points on each problem for modularizing. So if you get a perfect test, you could literally get 110 as opposed to 100. I don't like to typically give um, extra credit, especially on tests, but here's one case where it would make sense. So again, any questions, feel free to contact me. All right, I think I've gone over this all that I can. I've given you the names, I've given you the rubric, You've got a picture of what they'll look like for each one of these. So again, any questions, feel free to email me at jpscott at rankin.edu. Tomorrow, last thing, tomorrow, Thursday, the 29th, I'm going to start lecturing because we have to go through chapters 9, 10, and 11 next. I don't know how long that'll take. We may only get through chapter nine tomorrow. I don't know. We may get through nine and 10 tomorrow. I don't know. We may get through nine, 10 and 11 tomorrow. I don't know. Whatever we don't get finished with tomorrow, we will finish up Monday. All right. And the rest of the period then Monday will be a lab. Tuesday of next week, Tuesday, I will look at doing some select problems for you as we've been doing in the past. All right. Um, Wednesday, you could look at probably, probably a pretest day. Thursday will be a lab day. The pretest might be a little bit more extensive than what we've done in the past. That's not a warning. I just want to tell it to you. I want to because now we're grabbing information from 11 different chapters. All right. And if we get done with that, fine. And then Friday is will be our regular lab. And you can look at probably next Monday, the next Monday or Tuesday. I don't even know what day that is the ninth or the 10th or something like that. That would be your test on chapters. Yes, it's the 10th or the 11th. That would be your test on chapters 9, 10 and 11. Again, 
feel free to contact me if you need any assistance with anything on the test. Thanks, and I will talk to you then tomorrow morning.